All right, let's attempt number six on page five. This problem is a little bit different. It's asking us to solve for the enthalpy of neutralization. So what that is, is delta H. We can call delta H enthalpy. What helps me remember that that word enthalpy corresponds to delta H is the fact that there is an H here. It's also called the heat of the reaction. And that goes along with our whole H theme. So we have another H. You can call the triangle, if you're saying it out loud, you could say it's delta H. We could also call it change in. So delta or for instance, you might hear people say change in enthalpy or change in heat. The signs for delta H go along with the signs for Q, the same Q that we've been calculating. Um, and that's because delta H is Q for the reaction divided by moles. In this problem, they're very specific. So we're figuring out Q of neutralization. And we're going to divide it by moles of H2O formed. So basically, there's two steps to this problem. Step one, for, well, for us, you can do them in any order, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to work to figure out the moles of water that's formed. So let me call this step one, because I'm going to erase all this here in a second. And step two, which is kind of almost like a step separate problem, will be to figure out the heat or Q value, um, the energy associated with neutralization. And then at that point, step three would just be to divide it. In this problem, somebody mixed hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. This is a double displacement reaction. So our first step to figure out the products would be to, since this is aqueous, we could break it into its ions or disassociate it. So I broke it down and H plus is gonna hook up with OH minus and Cl minus with Na plus. So on the product side, we get H2O liquid plus sodium chloride, which is aqueous. And it's all one to one to one to one. Um, so make sure these are balanced too before you proceed. Just erase this so I don't run out of space. Remember for your ICF tables, they always need to include moles. So we are given enough information to figure out the moles of either reactant. So we have 100 mils of 0.8 molar hydrochloric acid. So 100 mils So we have 100 mils and we can check how our units are canceling. That's going to give us moles of hydrochloric acid. We're going to set up something similar for the sodium hydroxide. Um, 100 mils of 0 0.900 molar sodium hydroxide. So 100 mils. All 
Alrighty, then I can plug all of this into my calculator and get my mole values. You do the same. Check my work. Now that we have the moles, we can put them into our ICF table. So 0 0.0800 moles of hydrochloric acid and 0 0.0900 moles of sodium hydroxide. Initially, there's no water and there's no sodium chloride in the reaction mixture. This has a coefficient of one. That's understood. So we'll do minus 1x, minus 1x, plus 1x, and plus 1x. And then for the F part, we have 0 0.0800 moles minus 1x, 0 0.0900, minus 1x, 1x, and 1x. Remember, to determine your limiting reactant, you set both of these expressions equal to 0. And you do that separately. So, really quick over here. I have something like that, and so I would know x is equal to 0 0.0800 moles. The other x is going to be equal to 0 0.0900 moles. So I would approach each one of them the same way. Only use your smallest x. So after you set both of your reactants equal to 0, any large x values, throw them out. Ignore them. That's the x I'm going to use. So 0 0.0800 minus 0 0.0800 because I'm plugging this value into here, into here, into here, into here. So my actual values here after plugging it in, 0 moles of hydrochloric acid. It's my limiting reactant. Um, 0 0.0100 moles of sodium hydroxide. That's my excess reactant. And then 0 0.0800 moles of water and 0 0.0800 moles of sodium chloride. The value that's important to us, remember the problem they prompted us on those units. So they want per mole of water formed. So this is the value that we had to do all this work just to get this value to put into our third step. Let's do step two of this problem now where we have to calculate Q. I'm going to look at the problem again and organize the information that's specific to my Q calculation. So for instance, um, they gave us an initial temperature of 21.1 degrees Celsius. We're given a final temperature. And we're given a density. And a specific heat. We read carefully, we'll notice that all of these values are assigned to or pertain to the solution. So we can write Q of the solution equals mass of the solution times the specific heat of the solution times delta T for that solution. So we'll plug and chug into that formula. 
Um, I have almost everything. The density. So how am I going to use that? I need the mass of my solution. When we're doing the limiting excess reactant part, the problem said they took 100 mils of the acid and combined it with 100 mils of base. So all together I have 200 mils of the solution. If the density of that solution is one gram per mil, then 200 mils is gonna just be 200 grams. So if you are doing um, the calculation of mass for a reaction mixture where two things are poured together, make sure you're looking at the total volume and the density of the solution to get the mass. And so Q of the solution here is gonna be 200 grams. A lot of times they'll use the specific heat of water. It's a good enough approximation. All right, let me solve this. So 200 times 4.184 times 27.8 minus 21.1. Grams cancel grams, degrees Celsius goes away, and I'm just left with joules. Earlier, um, in the first part of this, I said delta H for the reaction is gonna be Q of the reaction over moles. Or maybe I wrote neutralization, but it's for the reaction itself, not for the solution. But typically what goes on, because we can't get the thermometer on the molecules themselves, we measure what's going on with the surroundings. So the solution or the water that the reaction mixture takes place in, this is a positive value. So we know that the water, I'll put it in quotes because it is just water, but because it's not pure, um, some people might be like, ah, it's a solution, not water. So the water is absorb absorbing heat. And I know that because of this positive value. Where did that heat come from? So the reaction must have produced the heat. So once again, we're drawing on all these relationships. Q of the system is equal but opposite to Q of the surroundings. So the two systems, system and surroundings, are going to have an uh, equal in magnitude but opposite sign relationship. One is endothermic and one is exothermic. So because the Q of the solution is positive, Q of the reaction then is negative 5,606.56 joules. So... This is exothermic, meaning that the reaction produced heat. So we really are almost done. The last step is just that division step. So um, I'll make some space over here real quick. So step three, is going to be to divide. So delta H of my reaction is going to be Q of the reaction divided by moles of water produced. So negative 5606.56 joules divided by I kept that number up there because I knew I'd forget it. 0 0.0800 moles of water and I 
get 70,000 joules per mole of water. Most of the time, these things are expressed in kilojoules. So I'm just going to divide by 1,000, and then I can um, write my final answer as 70... I'm trying to figure out the sig fig situation. I don't know. Uh, 70.08 um, kilojoules per mole of water. Guess just two sig figs. So let's just change this, or three sig figs, I apologize. 70.1 kilojoules per mole of water. 